Hello, welcome to Maths with EJD. In the previous video, I showed you step-by-step -step, uh, how to use simplex method to solve a particular problem. In this video, I'm showing you um, two different samples of Python codes you can use to solve the same problem and get the same result. Now, in the so the first so there are, like there are two of them, right? So in the first one, I'm using the SciPy library, while in the second one, I'll be using the Pop library, which is uh, a library particularly designed for linear programming. Okay, so let's do the first one, which probably I've, uh, that's something I've been using in the previous uh, situations when we we're talking about graphical method. So, I mean, everything is just like what you've known already. Uh, NumPy for numerical Python, which is necessary um, at some point, like, like you need to find the minimum value, for instance, you need to get that from numerical Python. Uh, yeah, from NumPy, right? And then you need matplotlib, since visualization is also very important. So we, we need matplotlib. Then SciPy is actually what is doing the actual optimization. And we from that SciPy, we need the linear programming uh, function called linprog, okay? And as usual, I think the view is always important. Let's show the lines. So in line seven, you're declaring the objective function. You know, it's a maximization problem. So just like you have z minus three x one minus two x two, you know, uh, so you have minus three minus two. Then of course, the next thing you have the constraints, x one plus x two is less than or equal to four. So you have one, one coefficients of x one and x two, then two x one plus x two, less than or equal to five. So you have two, one. Then four, five is the B side, right? Then you have the boundaries because it's there's no negativity constraint. So it's X greater than or equal to zero, uh, like that. Then line 23 is where you're actually, you're actually doing the linear program, uh, the simplex method. So that's why the method here is simplex. If you notice, when we're talking about the graphical method, the method we're using was uh, highs, H-I-H-S. But here we are talking about simplex. So we just replace that high with simplex and every other thing follows. So every other thing you have now, now we are extracting the result, the optimal solution and everything. Then if it doesn't exist, then it will tell us that optimization cannot be done. There are cases where optimization is impossible. Then, uh, so after all that, you need to you plot the graph. So everything from line 36 down to the end is uh, talking about how to plot the graph. Okay, so if I run this now in one blue, it takes a bit of time and then we get our results, right? It tells us the optimal solution found. X1 is one, which we got from a uh, simplex method in the previous video. X2 is also is three like we got. The optimal value of Z is 9.0, okay? So, and this is shown us in the plot here. So this is X1 is one, X3, I mean, X2 is three. The optimal solution is uh, at this point now. So if you substitute that into the objective function, uh, that's, um, you know, 3x1 plus 2x2. So since x1 is 1, that's 3 times 1, 3, 2 times 3, 6, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 6 gives us the 9. That's the optimal value. So that's using SciPy. If you want to use POP, okay, the, the syntax is a bit different, okay? So here now, of course, we use the matplotlib and numpy. Now, matplotlib for plot, numpy for numerical Python as some uh, necessary computation may be necessary, like getting lean space, for instance, uh, you need that to come from NumPy. So the functions you are going to use from POP will be LP maximize, since it's a maximization problem, LP problem, LP variable, and value, right? So in line six, you define the problem. So the problem is actually, uh, so you, you define it by saying LP problem, you want to maximize Z, then uh, LP maximize, that's how to define it in POP. Then talking about the decision variables now, uh, the non-negativity function, which you, uh, the non-negativity, we did that here, but in the first code, we did it in lines 19 and 20, but here it's coming earlier. Um, so lines nine and 10 talks about the non-negativity function uh, constraints. So you have L X1, LP variable X1, you know, this LP variable is what you used to define that. LP variable X1, the lower bound is zero. Okay, and then LP variable X to the lower bound is also zero, but we already know that it's a non-negativity thing, so like that. Now, the beauty of this one is that you can actually define the problem directly here. So the objective for the problem now is Z equals three X one plus two X two. So you can actually write it out as objective. You have three X one plus two X two like that. Then the problem, the constraints now, the, to define the constraints, you have 
So you define it as the objective, then you have constraint one, constraint two. So if you have more constraints, you can keep defining those constraints like that. Then line 20 is actually where the whole thing is happening. So that's where you're solving the problem itself. And lines 23, 24, 25 are where you're extracting the optimal value for X1, the optimal value for X2, and the optimal overall optimal value, uh, you know, substituting the optimal values of X1 and X2 in the objective function. That's line 25. Then every other part is just to show the plot and all that. So uh, if you click on this, now you get your result in one blow. Okay, so you see that, um, you know, X1 is one, X2 is three. So that's one comma three, that's the optimal solution. And then if you substitute into, into the objective function, you get 9.00. And that's exactly what we got for the simplex method. Okay, so the Python code is always uh, beautiful. So and interestingly, now you have options. You can use SciPy, Linprog from SciPy, or you can use Pulp, you know, um, with its peculiar syntax. If you are not subscribed to, to my channel, be sure to do that right away, you know, because you don't want to miss all these juicy things that we have going on here. You don't want to miss them at all. You also want to hit on the notification bell. Click the notification bell so you can always get alerted each time a new video is released. Then don't forget to comment. Let me know if there's a topic you like me to teach or there's a problem you like me to solve feel free to let me know and I may be able to find time to do that. Then if you, you should also like and share so that more people can have access to all this great uh, learning going on here. So like come your way again, keep optimizing. Bye.